yo soy Mitch de Morra que lee. Hoy estamos con, ahora sí que la gran presencia de Gabriel Sevin, la autora de Mañana, Mañana, Mañana. How are you, Gabriel? Good, good. I'm really happy you're here because I have to confess, I adore your book. Like oh. Norma saw how excited I was about the whole story. <laughs> and I didn't have a lot of expectation because I didn't know what to expect to begin mm. with. But I, I, I stumbled upon a really rich story with so many characters and so many diversity. First, I had to see a lot of um, interviews of you to, of, <laughs> and discussions of the book because I was really fascinated with what you came up with. Mm. And you mentioned something about it, about it being a love story without the romance, mm. right? So I would like to know what was the most difficult part of portraying a love story where romance isn't involved? I think the most difficult part of that is that other people have the expectation that there will be romance. Okay. You know, for me, it wasn't difficult at all. You know, I realized that I wanted to write a story that showed endings other than the ones we are trained to expect. Mm -hmm. You know, for some people, it's not a story if it doesn't end in marriage, if it yeah. doesn't end in children, if people don't end up buying a house together or something like that. And so for me, it was really important to tell a story that showed outcomes other than the usual one. Sam and Sadie are the most important people in each other's lives, but they don't have any of the usual roles that we think of for mm -hmm. that, for those people. And so I think their relationship poses this impossible puzzle for them. Like, what would you do if the most important person in your life wasn't any of the usual suspects, you know? Yeah. Or if it was just your colleague and your friend. I have never read a book like that before, and I was truly in love with the way that you portrayed their relationship, their friendship, you know, Mark, Sadie, and Sam. What I love the most about the book is the diversity of the characters. Mm. And I would like to know what was uh, the thing that you, that you enjoyed the most about uh, writing such a complex story in characters that go through so much during the novel. You know, for me, at this stage in my life, it entertained me to write something that had a lot of complication. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes people will read the book and they'll say, oh, this book has so much diversity in it. And they'll say it in kind of in a negative way. And to me, it's not like something I try to do. These are characters. Yeah. This is the world I know. It's the world I live in. It has increasingly complicated people in them with increasingly complicated relationships and understanding of themselves. And so I really, when I was writing the book, wanted to write a book that would reflect the world as I know it and the world as I live in it. Okay. Um, I was wondering if there was any character you enjoyed the most um, to of writing their point of views because, I mean, er everyone goes through so much in the novel. Uh, we got Sam who's going through, um, well, the living experience of being disabled and being in pain all the time. And we have Sadie too, who is going through some situations with her personal life and Marx who is going through, uh, well, trying to pull everything to be together. And I don't know if, if you had uh, one character that you enjoyed the most writing. Um, you know, to write a character, I have to love them. Okay. You know, so I loved all the characters in this book. But, you know, sometimes it's like Sam and Sadie are almost, they're close to me. And so they're almost like, it feels like they're my brother or sister. You know, like, so I almost, it's not like I get annoyed with them. I wouldn't put it that way. Mm -hmm. But they are less novel to me, less unique in a certain way, because mm -hmm. I live with them the most. And so in a way, the most exciting characters to come on are like the supporting characters, you know? So like Dove, for instance, mm. Dove is somebody that people see mainly as a villain. But for me, every time he came into the story, I knew something interesting was about to happen, you know? Okay. And so that, that makes him a fun character to write. I liked writing, I don't know if you remember them, but you know, uh, Simon and Ant, who are the other game designer mm, yeah. couple. And then the other game designer couple who are called Charlotte and Adam. They don't have like tons of time in the book, but I liked the way their relationships were reflections of Sam and Sadie's relationships mm -hmm. as, as well. You know, and of course, Marx, you know, I knew what I was going to do with Marx when I started. Oh with my the book. God. <laughs> and in a way that was kind of, you know, I know we're not going to go into spoilers or anything like that, yeah. but in a sense, I knew that um, I wanted to take this character that you think is sort of perfect and you don't really know him and in a way the our characters our main character sam and sadie treat him as if he's sort of uh has less humanity than them mm -hmm. like what can what can he do they use him for things um and so i wanted it to be this this moment in the book and you know when you get to the npc section where all of a sudden this character who's been very supporting is like now on the center stage and we see the ways in which you know he has a full life you know mm -hmm. okay so i wanted that to be the effect of it you know okay perfect um one of my favorite characters was sam mm. because i i 
up until now, I hadn't read a character that, has, that had to live with pain so much during his life. And I would like to know what were the key points of investigation or even, I don't know, a proper experience to portray a true and respectable character that's while well, living with a disability? You know, I think it starts with how you write a character. So in a sense, all characters have to start from me, you know, and because I am the writer of this book. Right. And so I don't know if I wrote anybody very well until I kind of acknowledged what my prejudices were, my privileges, the ways in which I'm like Sam, the ways in which I'm not like Sam. Um, and I think it comes down to acknowledging that before you can write somebody who is not you, you know. But in a way, pain is something that is part of all of our lives in a small degree or a great degree, you know. And, and so it was not difficult to imagine that if I fully gave myself over to it. I think the difficulty is we like to think that and somebody who is sick, somebody who is ailing, is in some other country, is in some other land, has nothing to do with you. You know, mm -hmm. because your body is well. But in fact, it's a country that we all go to eventually, you know. Okay. And so that was a way in which I approach writing Sam. So if you look at the book, the first scene of the book, we don't know that he is disabled. And in fact, Sam never calls himself disabled no. during the story. Um, but it's about a guy who's having a really hard time getting through a train station, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think if you look at it for Sam, so much of his character, so much of his even like, his advantage in life is that is comes from this pain that he has you know so for sam like getting through a train station is difficult but a video game is very easy you know mm -hmm. so it's the game that's life that is the challenge for him and so that was really what sam was and, and with all the characters it was thinking about you know what uniquely is their relationship to to video games okay i'm glad you mentioned video games because i would like to know what were your influences while writing because there's a lot of um pop culture references that mm. well i was born in 1998 and i was like i said well look, well, oh I, okay i remember seeing this in the early to, to 20s mm. 20s uh-huh and i would like to know what were your influences my influences were not video games, you know, mm -hmm. like I was an English major, you know, in college. And so I studied literature, you know, mm -hmm. but when I went to write this book, I had to study video games as if they were literature, mm -hmm. you know. And so I had never played a video game in my life with any sort of ulterior motive. Mm -hmm. I had never played a video game with any thought other than is this fun. But when I started to write this book, I didn't want the characters to be limited by what my taste had been. You know, they, they weren't going to be like, wow, we're really into Mario Kart. I wanted to really think about what would a video game designer play. So I, I had to study, actually. I studied it as if I were studying literature, you know. Okay. And and, and I started to just think what were the what were the kind of greatest games of the last, you know, of their lifetime, you know, which is kind of the history of video games too, you know. Right. And so in a sense that's what the book becomes. It's a history of these characters, it's a coming of age of these two artists, but it's also the coming of age of this industry, which is video games, you know. Mm -hmm. And and so that was where I started from in in approaching this. And it was difficult, actually. Yeah, yeah. I could imagine because there, there were a lot of things to consider, I, I suppose, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, so it was both the references that the book is making, but also the games that they make. And yeah. you know how they're able to come up with those games, you know. And so I always was looking in any given year, like what were the best-selling games, what were the games that were kind of critically the best received, and what were the kind of technological limitations of any particular year. You know, these were all factors in coming up with their games. And also, <laughs> the games that they make are the stories of their lives. You know, right. so they're all they're kind of they work in the same way that I think. Um, you know, that manana y manana y manana is the story of my life, you mm -hmm. know, in a certain oh. way, too. I actually played Sadie's game. Uh, should you did? Yeah. yeah, and it was fun. It was like, yeah, I get it now. Did I you get play it. on your phone or did you no, play on... No, I on the computer. Yeah, it's better on the computer. Really? On the phone, it's super annoying. Yeah. Like it, okay, well... Um, just to wrap the interview, I would okay. like to know if you can recommend this, the best book you've read so far in the year. In the year. Um, I really like this book called Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. I don't okay. know if it's come out here yet. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it's a book that's about a missing father. And okay. I kind of thought to myself, I can't read another book about a missing person. Like I'm so, I don't want to read any more crime. I don't actually like crime particularly. This isn't crime. So this mm -hmm. is about a missing father. And the only one who knows what happens is his son who has like a language deficit. He's autistic, but he, and he can't really express himself through words. Okay. And so the mystery is not just about um, where has this father gone, but it's about unlocking this boy's ability to speak, 
you know, okay. so it's really fascinating. Okay. So Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. Okay, thank you. Muchas gracias. Eh, recuerden que ya pueden adquirir Mañana y Mañana, Mañana de Gabriel Sevin. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Bye.